Hello, everyone. On the topic of cultural significance of rural identity to the upcoming generations, here I'm presenting you my paper entitled "Pride and Ambivalence: Food Heritage and Rural Identities Among Young Generations in Estonia and in China." In heritage studies, scholars have achieved an understanding heritage beyond merely a thing, and what is labeled as the ready-made world or national heritage. Heritage can be defined as the cultural transmission of a material or symbolic asset, a resource for identity formation and expressions at both personal and communal levels. Food, then, as one of the most essential part of our everyday life, is such a marker that reflects, preserves, shapes, and aspires the transmitting and growing of identities. Following the academic discussion on relationships of food, heritage, and identity, in this paper, I look into food consumptions and people's idea about rural and traditional food as food heritage. I approach ethnographically in two small places: Ginu Island in Estonia and Xinye Village in China. Ginu has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2008, and Xinye is a listed heritage site in China since 2000. In a comparative perspective, I'm taking a specific. A specific focus on young generations, and through the lens of food, exploring their identity as well as their aspiration and concerns on future with connections with the rural, environmentally, culturally, and socially. To start with,、uh, despite their geography, distance, and difference. Ginu and Xinye share many similarity backgrounds and features, as recognized well-preserved heritage in rural settings, in particular. This similarity in relevant to rural heritage opens up the possibility to compare people's perceptions of the rural and how people recognize their rural origins and identity in the two countries. Although one in Europe and one in Asia. Estonia and China can both be seen as countries of agricultural con- culture and history, and these two countries, after becoming independent nations, Estonia in 1991 and China in 1949, have strong discourses on catching up and with the developed West, and have booming developing projects on building themselves into modern countries. Ginu and Xinye, in a way, sheltered by their geographical remoteness and national、uh, and natural natural landscape, have got relatively untouched from the modernization process and remain rural. One as a traditional island and one as a historical village. With the title of heritage, tourism has developed rapidly and brought many changes to both community. There are improvements on infrastructures and economic opportunities for the local people. They find jobs at the visitor centers or develop their own business, shops, catering, accommodations, touring service, so on. In both places, different from the mainstream tendency in both country, young generations also start to move back to their rural hometown. Finding jobs, helping or creating family business, while also making changes to the local life with new and advanced idea and things they find in the outside world. The relatively exclusive community over time have has also become open under what is called the tourist gates. Visitors to Ginu and Xinye are usually from the cities or more developed area, and besides the scenery and fresh air, people are attracted by the overall rural life experience. The former less developed village becomes the living rural past and the lost paradise for in the eyes of the visitors. In both places, the daily farming life local residents still leading are moving to local museum and become exhibitions. And special or special activities for visitors. 
with particular interest on experiences of the rural past and rural life. Tourism also leads to the opening and sharing of all possible aspects of everyday and even personal life of the locals. Both in Ginu and Xinye, many locals open their own home as restaurant or homestay bread and breakfast. Everything from what people eat to drink to wear and use in history and in the present are all in turn become local speciality and local heritage. In Ginu and Xinye's process of becoming rural heritage and tourist destinations, the communities and people's everyday life are put into active interactions and comparison with the others, which is in the urban, the modern, and the developed setting. Looking into how the rural heritage and rural identity are being recognized by the local young generations in Ginu and Xinye, despite the similarities discussed above, I increasingly see differences. And one of the very outstanding mirror of different understanding on the rural is how people connect with the local rural food. Looking and asking how Ginu and Xinye people consume and think of the food they eat daily and now become known at, and sold as local heritage, what Ginu people usually introduce and describe to me with a strong sense of pride and preference, Xinye people show a more ambivalent tendency. Take the homemade dark bread Ginu lab and rice cake Xinye Mi Gao, for example. One Ginu girl coming back to the island from the university city in uh, university city in summer, spending time with her grandma and taking a part-time job at one local farm selling their Ginu lab, said to me, "The Ginu lab is special and different. You can't find it from supermarket, and you can't find it in other places." Many Ginu people, like elsewhere in Estonia, also buy commercial bread nowadays. Although it is more convenient to buy bread in shops, and there are more options available, Guinea people still prefer their similarly simple lab and making their own ones. Even for the younger generation, the Guinea bread is still made and eaten by the locals as one of their favorites. In Xinye, the traditional rice cake suggests a very different picture of what position food heritage can stand in local people's heart. Although, like Ginu, people still make and eat rice cake at home in Xinye, and introduce and sell it proudly as something from Xinye locally, people, particularly the young generation, see the rice cake as something they know from their hometown and something they do eat and are used to eat. Yet, in comparison with other things, it is not something they really prefer and think particularly nice. Like how a senior young man working in city described to me, for many senior people I had contacts with, although the rice cake does speak to their memory and suit their daily taste, is not as special as prefer like how lab is like for Guinea people. With more time I'm staying in Ginu, I increasingly see that such different perceptions and level of diff- preference from local use to on Ginu lab and Xinye Mi Gao are in connection with their understandings and evaluations on many other aspects of rural life, from the house, facilities, transportation, life activities to social circles, and. To put it in a broader picture, such different ideas towards rural food also resonate with their views on their identity and their positions as someone with a rural background in societies. Very much fundamentally, the rural has taken on very different meanings in Ginu and in Xinye. In Xinye, snack food and dishes for visitors are what locals. Will also make for themselves at home, and according to the season, materials are usually taken from people's own farm, their farming pool and garden freshly. For urban visitors who usually eat out, and buy food from market or different kind of catering, and need to concern about food security and sanitary all the time, 
peop, uh, food from Xinye is a worry-free, fresh, and homey treat like eating at grandma's in the old times. However, for Xinye local people, instead of one occasional nostalgic and long-lost cho-、uh, choice out of the many they can have in the city, this is what they have and only have every day and year-round. For the local youth, particularly for those who are studying or working in town or cities, the rural is often associated with the lack of options, demands on hard work, and seen as boring, out of fashion, and dis- undesirable in Xinye. Although there are also hardship and inconvenience, still eating, going to, and living in the countryside usually sounds more like an ideal dream in Gino. And a fashion is no less from locals than the visitors. Many people living in Gino take much. Enjoyment working in their fields, gardens, and greenhouse, finding mushroom, picking berries, fishing, and hunting in the natures. When they introduce, share, and talk about food with me, what they always adore is the sense of nature and are proud and they are proud of obtaining food out of their own hand. The simplicity and repetition of the limited food materials don't seem to stop Ginu people from loving their food and expressing their love without denial or doubt. It's nothing special, while at the same time very special in their own hearts. In particular, contrast with the association with a village farming life as being lost for generation in Xinye. In the eyes of young Ginu people, fishing and farming are not so much the survival means like it was for their ancestors anymore, but their life hobby and ways of relaxation and entertainment in nature. Being in the rural here is more like going back to a home in the wild nature, having a free and peaceful, adventure-filled and fun, natural and independent life. When I ask about the future, the general tendencies I find are that, although there are some developments in their village and building a future in the cities are definitely harder, senior youths would love to leave the village if they could. While in Ginu, many young people would love to keep staying or coming back, living on the island, but they will need to find some ways to manage to make a living as well. In the context of senior. Staying or returning to the village could mean being easier to have their own houses, and having the family support, for example, to look after their children. But in the cities, life is better and more successful, with more opportunities and things they want, like the decent and well-paid jobs, better education for children, more convenience, and colorful modern life. Leaving the village is hard, but it's a more hopeful and promising start up of life for senior people. In Ginu, although it is increasingly possible, and there are growing examples with the tourist development on the island, going away from the busy, noisy, crowded, clock-ticking city life and staying or returning to the hard, comforting island and the free nature, natural, rural life. Is also still very hard. The tourist season, with is coming along, job opportunity and access to various sub,、uh, substantial materials are still limited. And particularly, it is very hard still to manage and get through the long, cold, dark winter on the island. As described by the、uh, concept editable identities, food heritage as Can be、um, as fluid and unfixed social construct, and a powerful avenue where identities are complexly transmitted and formed, and are strategically articulated and negotiated all the time.
My investigation on rural food as heritage and identity of local use in both cases are situated within my limited time and access to the communities. And there are many other factors that are complexly interwoven, influencing the rural life and rural identities. But what might be interesting and thought-provoking is that rural heritage and the rural can mean very differently. And can be connected to people's identity in very different positions accordingly. From the specific stories of Ginu and Xinye, having more pride or more ambivalence on their rural identities, one thing in common is that there are big differences between the urban and the rural area in both countries, and the young generations are facing many challenges to keep a rural life. To Build the kind of connections they desire with rural heritage, from food to environment, from social status, and most importantly, life quality. And that will be all for my presentation for this time. Thank you.